Daniel Defense, DDM4, V7, M-Lock, 10,000 round review. Let's check this out. How we doing everybody? Kent Howard with Green Mountain Defense. Coming at you with a video that uh, <laughs> it's been a long time in the making and quite honestly I'm psyched to be making it. This is our 10, yes 10,000 round review on this here Daniel Defense DDM4 V7 with the MFR15 M lock rail on it. Um, wow. Just going back through all the footage here earlier today, doing the round counts. Um, no, we're not going to show you every single 10,000 round that's been through this gun. Number one, because I think that would be boring. Number two, because some was uh, classes and things like that, that not all rounds are accounted for um, video. But you're just going to have to trust me. I promise I won't bullshit you. Uh, there are legitimately 10,000 rounds down the pipe of this here rifle. Couple things. Um, it's been a year exactly. Picked this gun up in March of 2017. As I film this, it's the 11th of March of 2018. Um, the gun has not been any, anywhere for service to any defense nor anybody else has worked on this gun besides myself and me doing upkeep and maintenance on it. Um, I will not claim that it's been 10,000 perfect trouble free rounds because it has it. Although it has been perfect and trouble free with everything except one particular lot of one particular manufacturer of ammo. And uh, yeah, we will go over that later. Um, the gun has had several different iterations of accessory placement, but everything you see here is current setup and has been. Those of you that know this has been on the channel before, the gun's been updated as we go. I think we did a initial video, a 4,000 rounds video, and now we're at 10. So the setup is basically as follows. We've got this, uh, I believe this is the MS3 sling, excuse me, MS1 sling from Magpul. Um, nice two-point sling, can be adapted and lengthened and shortened very easily. Good piece of gear. It's in the QD slot back here and the QD slot up here, so that's good to go. Got an enforced weapon mounted light. Um, nice light. I will say that once every couple hundred, if not a thousand rounds, you do have to check to make sure this light is not coming loose. What can I say? It is what it is. Um, running the Trigicon MRO in the kinetic development mount. So that's pretty cool. Obviously, mag pull backup irons. Got a CMC um, flat trigger in it, three and a half pound um, single stage trigger. Left the grip alone, left the furniture alone, left the uh, rail alone for Daniel Defense as they sent it. So that's optic choice one. Optic choice two is the Vortex Strike Eagle um, 1 6 by 24 in the KDG mount as well. So there's, there's your accessories. And we've got a lot of rounds through both the magnified and the non magnified optic. The gun really runs. I love it. Um, so let's break this down into a couple into a couple uh, different categories. We'll go over them, and you're not going to have to look at my ugly mug this entire time. We're going to roll in inset footage of myself, my wife, a couple local folks at the range, friends, all kinds of people running this gun. Um, 
So, step one, reliability. I purchased 2,000 rounds of HAL Munitions Technology. They're the same people that own Freedom Munitions. HMT ammo. Um, that stuff was remanufactured XM 193, 2,000 rounds of that. Those 2,000 rounds mal malfunctioned poorly in both this rifle and other AR builds. Uh, all from the same lot number. HMT was going to take it back and swap it and do this and that. They were going to be very nice about it. Um, the rounds were very consistent. They were... Uh, they were double feeding, some were just slightly overcharged, some were just slightly over undercharged, some didn't run the bolt the whole way, some overran it, and you get a double feed, and not just this gun, but other guns. I'd say literally probably at one failure out of every 150 rounds out of that stuff. And the stuff that didn't fail from that ammo was keyholing like a son of a gun at short and intermediate ranges. So other than that, other than those 2,000 rounds, we've run all kinds of ammo. We've run Lake City, we've run American Eagle, um, we've run PMC, we've run some Winchester through it. Yes, we've even run some dirty, terrible, evil tool ammo, stool, steel ammo through it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we've run 855, green tip, and we've run uh, its chosen duty, if you will, load the... Spear Lawman 223 62 grain load, it loves. Um, so we've run a bunch of different ammo through this gun, zero malfunctions, no problem whatsoever, uh, except for that HMT ammo. So call it what you want to call it, call it 8,000 rounds of perfect service with uh, regular ammo, and call it eh with some stuff that probably should have been sent back, but I was just, I had it preloaded in magazines and everything else, and I wasn't going to send it back, I was going to push on through it. Um, so reliability, I'm going to give this gun 9 out of 10. The only reason I won't give it a, a square 10 is because, damn, unfortunately it did have failures with ammo. So there you go. Um, as far as the feature set of the gun, the way it comes, again, there's a lot of stuff I didn't change on it. I didn't change the muzzle device. I didn't change the rail. I didn't change the stock set. I didn't change the furniture. Meaning that to me, I liked it all pretty well. Um, the other fun feature I failed to mention was the uh, BCM gunfighter and charging handle. I did, of course, change that out. And I changed the trigger. Um, for a 1600R AR-15, yes, I get its DI, but still, uh, you know, it's it's an expensive, expensive gun for what it is. It could have been a $3,000 rifle, I suppose, if it was a gasser. Um, this thing had for a trigger in it from the start so that did have to get upgraded but other than that the feature set came pretty well exactly as I wanted it plenty of QD positions plenty of places to put accessories plenty of room on the rail I really like this smooth MFR rail as opposed to the uh, you know the old Daniel Defense quad rails that they had in the past um, let's talk for a little bit about about why this gun why this rifle um, I wanted to pick up a most of my other most of my other AR rifle builds have either been my first gun was a window that was a factory rifle. Um, after that, most have been parts guns from very you know Palmetto and Anderson things of that nature. All very decent, good builds. All that gave me uh, good service and good reliability, but certainly nothing top tier, or next level, if you will. And I'm not saying this is the be-all, end-all of AR-15s. Please don't, please don't see or hear me say that. I'm just saying that in my stable, in my collection, I didn't have anything that I was like, damn, you know what? I can pick that up regardless and trust my life to it. Uh, you know, service, maintenance, everything else. Um, I know for sure that that's a, that's a fighting grade rifle, if you will. So I made the decision to buy one. Um, not build one myself, but buy one that the pros put together. And I looked at other stuff. I looked at POF. They've got some great stuff out. I looked at Spikes. Obviously, they've got some good stuff out. I looked seriously at PCM. And then I looked at this. And I've shot all those other guns. Don't get me wrong. Not only them, but shot them. Um, had not picked one of these up. Had not held one in my hands. Had never seen one. Uh, a year and a couple months ago, went to the uh, Sportsman Show in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. 
and was, mm-hmm. was wandering around there and Daniel Defense out of booth. And I was immediately smitten. Every rifle I picked up was just like, whoa, that's better than the next thing I touched. Um, so I did my research, picked the configuration I wanted. I knew I didn't want the big beefy quad rails. I knew I wanted something slimmer and lighter. This is not the M4V7 lightweight. This is just the regular M4V7. I would have liked the lightweight. Couldn't find it, found this one. Um, I've been at home and happy with it ever since. Um, so, you know, the gun has performed. Like, how many guns can you say in your stable that you've honest to God put, even put 10,000 rounds through? Um, yes, it's been cleaned. Yes, it's been lubed. No, I didn't torture test this gun. No, I didn't throw it off a freaking building. No, I didn't, uh, you know, run it over with my truck or anything crazy like that. Um, you know, just, it's been an all around good gun. Another point to consider is accuracy. Um, I've shot this gun off a bench enough at various distances to know that this is a one MOA shooter. I'm not always a one MOA shooter, but with the ammo it likes, specifically heavy your ammo, uh, with this 223, 62 grain spear lawman stuff, it's a sub MOA shooter. Um, but this gun is an MOA shooter. And it's still an MOA shooter. This barrel, um, you know, not fake desk wood, has not shown any signs of slowing down. Um, it's not getting shot out. I was a little concerned when I started to see those rounds from uh, how munitions start to keyhole. Um, that was an anomaly. I went right back to, to better ammo and started getting one MOA results. One and a half, two, depending on, you know, me, variability in a shooter. Um, but when I put when I put glass on it, get some get some magnification, and shoot it at 100 yards, we're we're right there at one one MOA with the good stuff. The barrels held up. I mean, what else can you say? 10,000 rounds through one barrel, not even a, close to a sign of a problem or an issue. So that we're happy with. Um, Set up, you know, as, as far as the accessories I've got on the gun. What do I like? What don't I like? What would I keep? What wouldn't I keep? Um, this configuration, as you see it, is fight ready. This light is Mossy Manos, it's okay. I'll probably upgrade the light um, here at some point. But other than that, we're ready to go. The Trigicon MRO and the KDG mounts are both good to go. The Strike Eagle is a good optic for its price range, but it's not a fantastic optic. Um, probably will step up to something Trigicon um, you know, either an AccuPower or, you know, maybe maybe the higher end Vortex stuff or, you know, maybe something from Primary Arms, maybe something Nikon, maybe Burris, who knows, but, you know, the Vortex Strike Eagle is a good optic, it's not fantastic, um, but it's held up fine to use and abuse. Um, the question is going to be asked, yes, both optics do return to zero. You'll see that I have witness marks on the back of the mounts that line up with witness marks on the uh, on the top of the receiver set there. And when they go back in the right spot, I, I've not had to make any adjustments. Um, I zeroed the MRO at uh, 50 yards. And I've got the optics zeroed at 50 yards as well because that's what the holdovers on the uh, Strike Eagle ask for. Let's talk magazines. Um, here you see a Magpul PMAG. Obviously good to go, right? This rifle has also seen the one Daniel Defense mag that comes in the package. It's seen some CAA mags. It's seen Gen 3 and Gen 2 Magpul mags. It's seen steel uh, or aluminum or whatever, the 799 PSA mags. It's seen plenty of those. Um, and it has seen, what else has it seen? Oh, well, some surplus, I, I don't even know what aluminum mags with the uh, anti-tilt followers of them. No mag compatibility issues whatsoever, um, except for I have one one mag, one CAA mag that I must have dropped or beat up or bitched up or something. I do have one CAA mag that uh, just will not hold the bolt hold open on the, on the last round, just for whatever reason, the followers jacked up or whatever. Gun feeds fine, but that mag every time all my mags are, uh, except for these carry mags, all my training mags are marked. Um, 
with my with my uh, either my company initials or my own initials on, and I know exactly what number that is. So, you know, I know that's not a gun problem; that's a mag problem. Um, let's see what else. What else? What else could we get into? Just generally, like maintenance-wise, this gun doesn't get as gummed up as you think it would. I haven't been super soft and sweetheart to this gun. Um, I've taken it a thousand rounds or two, or in one case three, without a cleaning of any kind. Um, and then I've cleaned it every 500 a couple times. So I will say that, you know, it doesn't get super gummy or anything like that. It's at 10K after this video. Um, I might even send it back to Daniel Defense and just say, hey, you know, give me a going over on this gun and tell me what you think it needs done to it. Just be kind of interested to hear their take. So I got to do a little water there. Um, love this CMC Trigger. Got to tell you that I love that CMC Trigger. I could run this thing like a champ. Run it nice and fast. It's accurate. Um, doesn't give me any trouble. The other thing I have are these uh, K&S anti-rotation pins in the trigger to keep the trigger pins from spinning and hollowing out the follower there. That's pretty nice. Um, they work very well. Conditions, um, this gun has been like negative 20 up to 95 degrees out here. Every time it goes to the range, it gets slung across my chest, it gets walked to the truck, and gets tossed on the back seat of the truck. Um, it's gone on hunting trips, it's gone on camping trips, it's gone on fishing trips. It's done uh, both been used to teach a rifle class and it's been used to take a rifle class. So it's been in a class environment. Um, it has been dropped inadvertently. Um, you know, it's still, I gotta tell you, for, for 10K, the finish has held up, the components have held up. Um, by the way, everything, you know, all the proper staking is done on, on the, you know, nuts on this gun. Um, there's no, there's no obvious, like, as you pull through the gun and, and, you know, look down through the checklist of what's supposed to be there on a quality AR-15, there's nothing that was like, ooh, man, I don't know. One negative I will give them, um, I've had this apart, this, uh, this rail and uh, barrel assembly apart once just for maintenance and cleaning. It's kind of hard to get a, to get the right, um, what do I want to call it, Allen key into these bottom, this bottom right here, the right front um, screw head, because it comes into contact with where the, uh, where the lower's follower pin would go. Even if you pull the whole lower off, it just, I don't know, the, the Allen wrench I had for whatever reason that, that fits that size. And you know what? The rifle probably came with one and it probably got disappeared on me. But the Allen wrench set I have comes into contact there. So I have to really, I actually have to take a bit and put in there and use a, you know, a little bit different method with some pliers to make those first couple turns to make that work. Um, since I did that and realized how terrible it was, I had Loctited the Everlove and you know what out of that so it'll never come apart or loose. The whole reason I was pulling it apart in the first place was because I read some places where that assembly was coming loose on guys. Not this guy, I don't know what to tell you. Um, didn't come loose on me. And again, you know, 10K around. So if it was gonna happen to somebody, you'd think it would happen to me. Um, value for this gun, you know, hey, 1600 bucks, right? Um, I didn't do any favors or ask Daniel Offense to send me this or any backroom deals. Um, I paid retail money for this gun, 1600 bucks. You know, you could probably, if you decided to, you could probably build yourself something comparable for about 1200 if if you were being honest. But for 1600 I gotta be honest with you, I like to, I like to have the name, number one. I like to have the warranty and reputation. Um, that's something I should mention real quick. When I was having that trouble with the uh, HMT ammo, it prompted me to call the guys at Tandian Defense and actually have a conversation with those boys. Um, solid group of dudes. I mean, I had, I had two different conversations with them about the email and contacted three different employees on the phone 
and was extremely impressed with all three. Everybody was helpful. Um, their first inkling without even missing a beat was, dude, if you think there's something wrong with your rifle, don't even like, box it up, send it in, we'll, we'll handle it, we'll get it right back to you. No questions asked. Um, and they were also willing to, you know, talk me through and making sure there wasn't something going on with my gun. Um, you know, I'm confident that it was all ammo related. And that's borne out by the bunch of rounds we put down there. As far as ergonomics are concerned, I don't know what about it it is about this rifle. This thing just fits me personally very well. Stock fits me very well. I get a nice, good cheek while I'm with gun. Um, when I have it slung, I can snap this gun up and really do good, quick work, fast, and well. Um, I like being able to wrap my hand around a good portion of the uh, the handguard here without issue. Obviously, we all know about M-Lock. M-Lock locks up nicely. We don't have to put too much time into worrying about that. Um, as far as heat dissipation goes, I will say that this handguard system and barrel couple hundred rounds in, especially when you're moving quick. Um, today I finished this, I finished this out, I shot the last 300 rounds in an hour and, you know, 10 minutes or whatever. This thing gets a little hot when you run that much ammo. Um, especially quick burst and things like that. It does, it does have a tendency to get a little hot in the handguard area. I wear gloves oftentimes when I shoot rifles, so doesn't affect me much and if I had to run it barehanded I of course could it's just a comfort thing it's not gonna burn you um, so there is that to know um, we've said a lot about this gun I gotta say um, I'm impressed with it it served me very well it served my family very well my wife can shoot it great a uh, bunch of neighbors friends family all that all those people can shoot it great it's given me 10,000 rounds of uh, very 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 um, good service, solid performance on this gun. Uh, this has been shot 300 rounds today. Uh, it's literally going to get this mag charged right back in it and go right back in its own defense roll right here in this home. Uh, that's how much I trust it. Listen, uh, if you like these reviews, please like, favorite, subscribe, and share. It really helps us out a lot. Check out the Amazon affiliate in the uh, link in the bottom of the description. Also have Amazon affiliate links for the scope, the dot, the mounts, all these, all these different accessories. I'll do Amazon affiliate links on those. Um, I don't want to babble on too much about this because let's be honest, there's two other videos on this channel about this very rifle that go into more detail as well. So if you're just catching this one, back up and watch those other two. Kent Hauer, Green Mountain Defense, Facebook at Green Mountain Defense, YouTube at Green Mountain Defense. Instagram, Green Mountain Defense. Hit us up on our website, www.greenmountaindefense.com. Thanks for watching. As always, God bless. Take care, everybody.